Sweet. So what's up, guys? Thanks, uh, thanks, um, Doyle and the trio, right? <laughs> what do you call yourselves? Do y'all have a band name? No, we're just a band. The house band. Jesus, the house band. The house band. Hey, did y'all worship tonight in song? Did y'all worship tonight? Yeah. And I play in the praise band. I'm a bass player, so I, I pretend to play in the praise band. No offense. Down the base. <laughs> so it's nothing to them, and it's nothing about them. I mean, there's a lot of hard work and a lot of a lot of practice that goes into to doing the best that they can to lead y'all in worship. And man, to sit back and watch y'all worship, man, it blesses my heart. Okay. So I got some warnings tonight. So here's some of the warnings. I get passionate. I can get loud. Yeah. And you good with that? Yeah. This, group's, this group's okay. So if I start, I'll come this way. All right. Okay, but I'm in a point in my life where I get emotional. I get emotional. I lost my father a few months ago. And the whole see, see it's what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> see, the whole father to the fatherless has now become real to me. And some of y'all have experienced that. Some of y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. This is fresh, because me and my dad were, were really close. Really close. So if I get to that point, I want to say excuse me, but don't excuse me, just get over it. Because it's just it is what it is. Y'all good with that? Yeah. Y'all good with that? Okay, awesome. All right, good. We'll get started. Okay, so get out your word, get out your scripture, your sword or dagger, whatever it is you call it. And we're going to be in Philippians chapter Uno. Chapter Uno. So while y'all are getting there, uh, while I'm getting my notes and stuff ready, man, I, I'm excited. This is awesome. This is the second meeting y'all have had, right? Right? So if I ruin it early, then we can say, oh, it's just new, it's just true. It'll, it'll get better. Okay? So that's how it usually goes with new stuff and, that I'm involved in. But this is exciting. This, is, this really just fires me up to see this happen. Because this is not about a denomination. This is not about a building. This is not about a day. This is about God's people coming together for God's glory. Right. Amen? Amen? Right. Amen? Amen. Right? Amen. right? Amen. So, so here's the thing. I'm from just north of Memphis, and I'm not even used to having multicultural, man. I'm not, I mean, if, if a black guy shows up in church, we're like, hey, look, we have a black guy show up today. I mean, <laughs> so this, this is awesome, man. This is great. <laughs> can I say that? Because I just did. There's no going back now. Okay. Right. You don't care that, right? You go back. There we go. See, that's what I'm talking about. Right Call him Token right here. All right. <laughs> so, look. So here's the thing, because this is church. This is what church is supposed to be about. Meetings like this is what changes the world. It's not, see, Satan loves it when we get together on Sunday mornings, we get in our building and we have our Sunday school. He loves it, because that's not, I'll tell you wrong when I say this, there's new pastors there. That's not affecting the world like this can. That's not community like it should be, like this is. When some of y'all, probably the only thing y'all ate today was brownies in the back, and that's why you still got them puffing out your pockets. I used to be in college, I understand, okay? So, I'm telling you, meetings like this change the world. So if you came to hear the word, God wants you to change the world tonight. If you came to see a guy or a girl get over it, you want to hear the word, so you better pay attention. All right, say so with me. All right, Philippians 1. Philippians 1, we'll be in verse 21. So let me ask you this too. How's your living? Christian, believer, the ones who are struggling, the ones who, who are doing strong, how's, how's your living? How's your life? I tell you like I tell other groups I talk to. If I kind of ask a question and there's a pause, it's because I'm waiting on an answer. Okay. So how's your living? Are you going to struggle a little bit? Drew is struggling? Not that Drew is struggling. Yes, I'm struggling. Yeah, I struggle. Right? Drew hurt a little bit. Man, I'm hurting a lot of it. It's, it's tough. It's hard. And then you throw in Christianity. I mean, if, if you could separate that out of your living, you throw that in, and then not only are you trying to exist, but you're trying to exist for the glory of God, and it gets tough. Right? I mean, like that video that, that we watched to begin with, and Talking about life and, and fidelity and, 
and, and trust and, and the whole nine yards, and it's just, oh, it's just sometimes it can just be, oh, you know, I might spell it, but it's, oh, right? So how do we get past that? That's what we look at tonight. We look at how do we get past that? Because so when we talk about when we talk about living and life, and, and then we try to relate to scripture, and then all these people start coming to mind. Who comes to mind when you start thinking about how you want to live, how you should live, or how you are living, and vice versa? Okay, we got Jesus, right? The typical sensible answer. Thank you. Paul. We got, we got Paul. Who said Paul? Peter. Okay. Uh, who else we got? Peter. Peter. That's Peter is my man. Right? Peter is my man. He might say the ways, but at least he had enough guts to step out. Right? Peter's the one who always took his foot in his mouth, like I've already done quite a few times already. Right? Peter's my man. But, but when, when, when I read who I want to be, which, which to me is definitely Christ, but when I read who I want to be, and I read Paul, Paul, when I see Paul, and I see his life, and I see his missionary journeys, I see what I want to be, I read where he says he's not who he wants to be. Right? Why do I do the things I don't want to do and not do the things I do want to do? Guess what? I suck. Right? I mean, that's basically what that's the true translation. Okay? All right? That's, that's what he says. But he also has some, some amazing insights, some amazing Holy Spirit Field stuff going on in his life. And if there's one verse that can sum up the Paul that I want to be, which ultimately is the Christ that I want to be, the Christian that I want to be, it has to be this verse right here. It has to be this verse right here. So in Philippians chapter 1, I'm going to start in the end of verse 18. And into verse 21. It says, Yes, and I will rejoice. This is Paul. For I know, let me get that out of the way. For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayers and the provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and hope that I will not be put to shame in anything, but that with all boldness, Christ will even now, as always, be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. That's the Paul I want to be. That's the life that I want to have. I don't want to struggle. I don't want to suffer. I don't want to go ugh, day after day. I don't want to do the things that I want to do and not do the things that I don't want to do because I suck, right? I want this. I want that expectation to be there. I want for my body, whether by life or death, exalt the Lord. And in verse 21, man, 21, Paul nails it. He absolutely just, I mean, drives it home. Like that? Shit, I mean, drives it home. He drives it home. He says, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. We should be able to read that truth, say amen, and go to the street. There's, I mean, I'm telling you, I don't have enough time to unpack this the way I'm going to try to unpack this. I unpack a little bit, but the best of a little one-on-one, -on -one, not much, not as much as we should have. But there is so much truth into what Paul is saying that we, when we leave that door, we should never look back. When we leave that door, we should not be the same as when we came in by what Paul is saying right here. Because see, this is, this, is, this, is, this is Paul's testimony. This is Paul's life verse, if you will. Because see, what he's saying here is that the son life of Christ replaces the sin life of me. The sun life of Christ replaces the sin life of me. And it's absolutely simple. Because you have 11 words here. Some translations, a few more, a few less. But you have 11 words here, and nine out of those 11 words are monosyllables. It's absolutely simple. It's absolutely elementary. 
of how to live as Christ. Of how to live as Christ. So, we're just going to take one, two, three, four, yeah, four points. Okay, as any good Baptist preacher, actually it's three plus one. Okay, so better than your average. Like that. Okay, all right. All right, like that. So, just some simple takeaways from this. Man, I mean, you know, y'all college students, y'all, y'all go and you sit and you want to hear somebody talk and you want to be blown theologically and you want to hear Matt Chandler and you want to hear Dave Platt and your Francis Chan talk about a balance theme and you want to hear all that stuff and it's all good and it's all great, but we need to make sure that we're founded on the simplicities of the gospel. Yeah, that's right. The simplicities of the gospel. Because I know so many students, so many college age theologians who are so theologically depth in Calvinism and Arminianism and transubstantiation and all the model snowman and the whole nine yards that they miss the gospel. So 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 first and foremost, life has to be deeply personal. Deeply personal. What does Paul say? Those first two or three words. Somebody give it to me. No, in, in, in Philippians 121, what does it say? For to, me. For to me. I'm big on words, man. I'm big on words. Right? What would Jesus do, man? When I was y'all's age, I had that bracelet on, the cheap little thing that came unraveled after you had it for like 30 seconds, right? What would Jesus do? Well, how do you know what Jesus would do if you didn't know what Jesus did? And how can you know what Jesus did if you didn't read his words? And how are you going to read his words unless you take it one word at a time? So for, to, me. It has to be personal. It has to be absolutely personal. John 3, 16, right? For God so loved the world. Okay? Christ died for the world. We know that, right? Okay? Ephesians 5, 25, right? He gave himself for the church. Okay, not First Baptist, not the Nazarene, not the, the church. Church, okay, the people, right? Okay, so it's not only the world, it's not only the church, but Galatians 2.20, the life that I live, right? He says, in that same passage, he says, me. It has to be absolutely personal. In John 10, he's the good shepherd. In Hebrews 13, he's the great shepherd. In Peter 5, First Peter 5, he's the chief shepherd. In Psalm 23, what is it? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. See, salvation does not come in pairs. You're not a Christian because your father was a Christian. You're not a Christian because your grandmother drove you to church. You are not a Christian because you live across the street from the church. You ain't a Christian because you walked down the aisle with your best friend, your best friend said a prayer, got saved. You do not come to Christ in pairs. There are no such things as twins and triplets in the family of God. God don't know you by your brother. He knows you by you. He knows the number of hairs on your head. Revelation 3 20, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man knock, Singular man comes, right? Behold is a command. Behold! Because see, when the Jews read it, when the Hebrews read it, when the Greeks read it, they jumped off the page. See, we lose that translation. It's on the whole, he stands the door. No, behold! Listen up, command. If you hear personal, if you hear has to be deeply, deeply personal for to me. Old Testament, my favorite book in the Old Testament, Joshua. He says in chapter 24. Chapter 24, verse 15. Anybody know? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me, Anybody come up under me, they serve my God. Because that's how personal it is to me. 
My wife who assigns herself to me and I assign myself to her and she is in my household and our household and I'm the head of that household and though she may be the neck and turn the head wherever they go. Make sure you tell my wife I said that. <laughs> she will follow after my God. Me, personal. Has to be personal. Deeply, deeply personal. But not only is it personal, it's absolutely Wonderfully practical. Wonderfully practical. For me, come on, as for me to live. To live. See, the, the verb just behind this is never ending. It's a start without, without ever finishing. So it's to live, 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 live. Okay? So, so here's the thing. What does it take to live? Guess what I'm doing right now? I'm living. Right? <laughs> I'm living. How hard is it for me to try to live? It's not that hard. I can lay down on the floor and do nothing and still live. I could. I can lay there until the cows come home. I'm a Kinsey. I know what that means, right? Okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I had to. <laughs> Right? So, so I can do that and then I would still live. It's practical. There's nothing here that is that is saying that all oh, this is so hard, and, oh you have to try and and, and oh it's it's just my mind. No, it's to live. But here's the thing. But here's the thing. To obey Christ. You must be a carrier of that life. See, that's what connects the two. For me to live is Christ. So if you have me and Christ, what connects the two? Living. Living. See, here's the thing. Here's the issue. Okay? You want some deep theological truth to take with you? Here we go. Okay? Alright? Christianity is nothing to do with what you do. You are not a Christian because of what you do. Let's get this out of the way right now. You are not a child of God because you sin less. You are not a child of God because you said a prayer. You are not a child of God because you read your Bible. Christianity is not based on what you do or don't do. It is based solely and heartily and wholly upon what Christ has already done. You are a believer and you are a child of God only because of what Christ did on the cross and you surrendered and died to yourself because of that. So there's nothing that you can do to merit or unmerit that favor. There's nothing. There's nothing to do. The, the love of God cannot grow any greater for you, believer. I'm talking to believers right now, by the way. Nor can the love of God grow any less of you. Because it's not based on you. It's based upon the words of Jesus Christ. So what connects you and Christ is living. Not about what you do with that life, but being a carrier of that life. Now, don't, don't take this role that didn't say, Drew, I don't mind Drew said, no matter what we do, I don't know that, because I don't mind how we do. That's not what I'm saying. Okay? It's not what I'm saying at all. We'll get into that a little bit later. But what I'm saying is quit trying and just be. Have you ever seen uh, the skit guys? Um, What's the name of that? Uh, God's chisel. That's the one. Uh, God's chisel. Right? He said, look, I've made you holy. Be holy. Quit trying and just be. Quit trying and just be. Because what happens is whenever you live, whenever, whenever, for me to live as Christ, 
When you live as though you desire to live for Christ, God cooperates with that living. With through the power of the Holy Spirit and makes you who He has called you to be. Does this make sense? Are y'all with me? I feel like I'm speaking Greek here. Shut up out of hand now. Okay, look. So, are y'all with me? Yeah. Are, are you here? Are you there? Okay, so, so that's the thing. God cooperates with that. But cooperate with you being a carrier of that life. What do I mean by carrier of that life? See, so here's, here's the thing. There's so much, man, there's so much truth we need to cover that we just don't have time. To be a carrier of life is to take the life that you have and pass it on to the next bearer of that life. Okay? Right? My father had three sons. I'm the youngest. Okay? He's passed, but his name shall carry forth. Why? Because he was a carrier of life. His name was passed through the other generation, myself. And my three children. Okay? But if he had no children, his life would have died with him. So there's proof, there's existence of his life because I stand before you today. There's proof, there's existence of his life because there's fruit from my loins, my three children. Aliens, devils, whatever you want to call them. Okay? All right? <laughs> There's less proof of his life. Even though you will never meet the man in the side of glory, and I pray to God he's there, there's proof of his life. So that's what it means by to be a carrier of life. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, right? Okay? And all that was framed, and all that was made was, was made within it, right? Okay, that's John chapter, chapter 1, right? Okay? All right? Um, it's, it's, it's the Word. But the Word became flesh. flesh. Right? Okay. Why did the Word become flesh? So that the flesh could bring the Word. Why did the flesh bring the Word? So that the Word, see what I'm going here? Could become flesh. So why did the Word become flesh once again? Through salvation, so that the flesh, say it, come on, could bring the word. So if you see, you see, this is rocket science, right? Okay, word flesh, word flesh, word flesh, word flesh, word flesh, word flesh, Drew. <laughs> now what? Carrier of life. For me to live is Christ. It's to be a carrier of life. Are you following on that? Yes. Okay, ah, good, because we're moving on. So, it's, so not only is it personally, deeply personal for me, not only is it wonderfully practical to live, okay, but it's absolutely possible. Okay? This does not depend, this does not depend on me. This depends on the one who is living through me. I've right? already covered that. It's not dependent on what I do, it's dependent on the one of, of, of who, is, who is living through me. You, you follow me? You with me? Yeah. Okay? For me to live is Christ. Why is it not as Christ? Because it's not about how you live, it's about who is the one doing the living. It is Jesus Christ. It is Him in the flesh. The taste of eternity. Right, is here. You know, why? Because Christ lives within you, believer, and he is in the room today through your flesh. You say amen, but are you living that way? And I'm just as guilty. And I sit back there against the wall and I weep for my sin. And then I'm guilty over my sin. And Satan beats me up about my sin because I'm sitting there saying amen, but I'm living like that. It's time for us to rise to the occasion. Because there are souls at stake. Right, brother? Amen. So, it is gloriously possible for me to live is, and I love that word, is. It 
is Christ. Because see, here's the thing. If you take that is, well, what is Christ? Christ is this. Christ is, is in John 46, Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. I'm going to spit these out real quick. If you're taking notes, you better take them fast. For him to be the way, he is the course. For him to be the truth, he is the understanding. For him to be the life, he is the existence. He's the course, the understanding, the existence. For him to be the way, he is the salvation. For him to be the truth, he is the surety or the sensibility, the logical. For him to be the life, he is the satisfaction. The satisfaction. Are we satisfied with Christ? For him to be the way, he is received. For him to be the truth, he is residing. And for him to be the life, he is released. If there's anything you take away today, the Christianity is this. He is received unto you. He is residing within you so that you can release him into the world. The way, the truth, and the life. Truth, life, truth, life, truth, life, truth, life. Okay. Right? I can't say it any better. I can't say it any better. If you can't, you go right ahead, brother. I promise. Come on. <laughs> John 10, 10, I come. Does anybody know it? That you may have life. That's what I said. Have it more abundantly. And my soul and try to go to heaven with it down. No, ain't Ethel, that's not it. It's talking about right now. It's talking about right now. You I come to bring you life. That's present tense and life more abundant. Right now. Tonight. Today, tomorrow, as you're in class, as you're at work, as you're walking across campus, as you're in the gym, man, have life abundant. Have life abundant. Release Christ into the world, believer. Release him into the world. Deeply personal for to me, wonderfully practical to live, gloriously possible is Christ. But it's also etern eternally profitable. Eternally profitable. For, for to me to live is Christ. But, man, I love big butts right here. <laughs> yeah, I said it. And I cannot lie. <laughs> all right? Yeah. All right? It's college students. It's okay. Adults just ignore me for a minute. Because I'm an adult, I promise. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, that conditional clause, but that, man, that changes everything. But to die is gain. To die is gain. Because here's the thing, if you live, if the first part of the verse is true, then the second part of the verse holds true. Okay, you follow me? If, if, if the first doesn't hold true, guess what doesn't hold true on the second? Yeah, you know what I mean. You, you with me? Uh, he's with me, that's all that matters. Okay, if you don't get it, talk to him later. Okay? Uh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> yeah. All right, so, so the first has to hold true for the second to hold true. So for me to live is Christ, but to die is gain, okay? So if, if you live for Christ, then you will gain at death. But, but remember, it's not about what you do or don't do. It's about what he's doing through you, okay? So it's not, it's, it's, it's not church attendance, and it's not the pins you get. It's not the check marks and, and the stars on the board. It's, 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 not, it's not that. Okay, it's not the souls you saved. It's not the praises you get on Wednesday nights. It's not that. It's about the life that Christ lives through, through you Monday through, or Sunday through Saturday. So, so if, if you live for Christ, then you will gain at death. Then you will gain at death. What do you gain? Here's what you gain. You gain eternal freedom from all problems. You gain eternal freedom from all problems. See, I don't think you understand what the problem is. The problem is you're a filthy sinner. That's my problem. That's why 
now I know it's your problem because that's my problem. You know why we don't understand our feelings? Because we don't understand what sin is. What is the word sin? Chata. What does it mean? Anybody know? To miss the mark. To miss the mark. That's it. That's what it means. Just to miss the mark. Okay. They would have archery contests billions and billions of years ago. Okay. Uh, if, if they didn't hit bullseye, oh, John, sin, you just sin right there. Okay? You missed the mark. See, there's three transgressions against God. There's sin, there's to miss the mark. And that's anything that we do that is not perfection, this is the mark. And here's the issue. Even if you shoot, if you shoot once and miss the mark, even just by man, I mean just a millimeter. If you miss the mark by, by a millimeter, you still have missed. Okay? But even if you hit dead bullseye from there on out. You know what? You will never hit 100%. You may hit 99.99999% but you will never hit 100 and God requires 100. So even if you hit that 99.9999 and remain your following, okay, you are still a wretched sinner. You're still a wretched sinner. So you have sin, you have, so you know the other two? Transgressions. You don't know what a transgression is. Hmm? Transgression. Here's transgression. Okay? Preston, my youngest. Preston, don't touch the cookies before dinner. Don't. Don't. I, what did I say? I have to kid every time. Right here. Look. What did I say? Don't touch the cookies before dinner. Okay? <laughs> I, so, I, okay. So I turn around. I go. Whatever. Take a shower. Clean the bedroom, do the laundry, whatever my wife tells me to do, okay? And I come back, and the sorry sucker has got crumbs on his ribs. <laughs> Preston? <laughs> yeah. But you did nothing? Son? What'd I tell you? Don't eat that cookies before dinner, right? He knew the rules. The line was drawn in the sand. He said, don't care. I transgressed. Same word as trespass. If someone trespasses on my property. My father had has a pond up the road from his house, or had a pond of whatever, the state. And he had a sign up that said, Trespassers will be shot. <laughs> I swear to you, I swear to you. On a wooden post, survivors will be shot again. <laughs> I swear to you. Damn. I promise. I promise it was my dad. <laughs> There's, I'm, I'm driving this truck tonight because it needs to be driven. There is like open ammo, like floating around in the floorboard. It's just, if I get pulled over, I'm going to jail. Right? Think <laughs> why? I promise. Right? That, that's what it means to trespass. Not only do we miss the mark, but we willfully rebel against Jesus Christ. God says, "Don't do this," and we say, "I'm better than you." Boom. Don't look at pornography. Don't lie. So I Don't gossip. Isn't that your business? Right? Don't steal. I like your time for that. <laughs> we just constantly step over the line. We trespass, we transgress the law of the Lord. So you have sin to miss the mark. You have transgression, which means to trespass, to willfully and rebelliously disobey. And I'll tell you right now, every time you sin, believer, every time you sin, it is willful. Because you have the power within you not to do it. Now, I'm not going to say that you need to sin this rest of your life. I am not that naive. I'm not that stupid. But you have the power within you not to do it. So you have sin, you have transgression, and you have iniquity. What's iniquity? And all this can be found in Psalm 51, too, BT does. Okay? Iniquity is this moral defect. What do I mean by moral defect? For something to be defective, something must be what? Broke, right? Must be broken. Okay? So for us to be morally defective, it means our morality is broke. Not only 
Do we miss the mark? Not only do we willfully disobey, but in and of ourselves, we don't even know what's right and wrong. We are morally broken. Sin, transgression, iniquity. So look, so let me read this to you again. Okay? So, to die is gain. We gain freedom from all problems. From all sin, all iniquity, and all transgressions are absolutely cut at the quick man head off before you enter the gate into glory. We will never struggle with that ever again. Amen. Amen. We won't sin, we won't struggle, nor will we ever suffer ever again. So eternal freedom from all problems. We have eternal future in a prepared place. So now look up John 14 too. Real quick. 14 2. Ready and go. I know some of y'all had to do bowel drills back in the day. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. But yeah. Okay. Okay. Hear ye, hear ye. Okay. This is, when I say this, this is my opinion. Absolute my opinion. Y'all got me up top, loft? You hear me? My opinion. Okay. There's a lot smaller people who disagree with me, and they can be wrong. It's okay. I don't believe he's up there building mansions. Okay, in my father's house are many mansions, right? Okay, I go to prepare a place. Now, my grandmother used to say it, man. My mama, yes, I have my mom. And she's like, no, oh, Jesus is up there. And he's building me a house. I ain't got much longer to live. And no, it's sweet, my mom. It's awesome. You know, and, 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 but you know what? If Christ can speak in everything in existence right now, boom, how long is it going to take him to create a couple of mansions? This is what I this is what I think. He said, I go there to prepare a place for you. If he can speak everything in existence, then how is he preparing it? This is again my complete opinion. I'm just throwing this out there. I believe within my heart of hearts that the way he is preparing a place for me is by using me to reach the other ones who's going to be living right beside me. Because see, salvation is not about getting me into heaven. Salvation is about getting Christ out of heaven and into the earth, giving him feet again, giving him a mouth again, giving him hands again, giving him words again, giving him life again, right here. That's what salvation is about. That's what salvation is about. And if he is preparing a place, it's only because the last one who will ever be saved has not yet gotten there. You want to know why you're not in heaven right now? Because there's one more person on this planet right now who will accept Christ. That's why. And he's waiting. He's saying, be my mouth, be my hands, be my feet, do it. Let me live through you. Quit trying and just let me be. So it's an eternal future in prepared place. But it's also eternal fellowship with an eternal person. See, when you die as a believer, you get more of what you live for. When you die living for Christ, you get all of them, every bit. Every bit of Christ. His scars, his hands, his feet, his crown, his glory shining forth from him because he provides the light of eternity. And he comes to you. Zephaniah says he sings over you. He says when you get to heaven, you won't be singing to him. He's going to be singing to you. Read it, man. It's a great chapter. You get more of what you lived for. And we get so caught up on these measly 80 years that we get, if we get that. My dad got 68. 68. 
You see, it all goes full circle. For to me. Because if you can't get past that for to me, then you can't carry on any of the rest of what we talked about. It has to be absolutely personal. See, my dad, a very religious man, church every Sunday, suit and tie, man, <coughs> in his 70s, big thin jacket on, I'm just saying, looking retro type. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever see him again. And I don't say this to make a big sad statement. I don't say this to, to get pulled in your heart I say this because it's real. I say this because there are people right now walking in your campus who will die. There will be somebody there who will die before the end of this year. Just about guaranteed. Will they know Christ? For to me. It don't matter if they go to church. It don't matter if they go to Tuesday night Bible study. It don't matter if they come here once a month. What matters is do they deeply, personally, intimately know Jesus Christ? And the only way that they will ever know is by you. Out of a hundred men, one man will read the Bible. One man will read the Bible. And out of those a hundred men, the other 99 will read that one man. I believe it was Moody who said, I constantly share the gospel, consistently, all day, and sometimes I choose to use words. Because it can't be just about you going out there and saying, hey, man, you live for Jesus and you go do whatever the heck you want to do. The gospel is a lifestyle. Christianity is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle of you dying to you and him living through you. So my man's going to come up. Drew, I ain't got a good name, dude. Come on. And I promise you, I struggle with the same stuff. There ain't nobody in this room that's got to figure it figured out. Nobody in here's got to figure it out. I don't even preach for a living. I'm a maintenance man at an ice cream factory. What's up with that? <laughs> you know, Derek, we ain't got nothing on what we put together in the background. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just a nobody trying to tell anybody about somebody to save everybody. That's all I am. Because I grew up in church. I grew up knowing the right answers to Jesus at the right times, right? I didn't know Christ. It was not personal to me. That's why I started chasing girls, and chasing drugs, and chasing alcohol. And saying, you know what? Selling drugs, buying a premium alcohol, You say, no, I'm caught up in the game, man. I'm caught up all up in it. Some weed, some coke, some acid, make a hand or a fist of money, and the whole time going to church on freaking Sunday morning. God, you took my life in. I was a leader in the youth group for goodness sake. Playing the game. He said, enough is enough. I was 17 years old. Fresh of the year, UT Martin, there's no mistakes there, right? They say, you know, I done got arrested and kicked out of school with my girlfriend pregnant and I'm married and I eight dollars an hour in construction. You know why? Because God said, you will not ruin my name. He said, I have a holy name. But he said, I'm gracious and I'm merciful and I have plans for you. Because the word has now been put into your flesh so that your flesh can now bring the word. And it has been an uphill battle ever since. But 
man, I tell you what, it has been worth it. There is nothing, there is nothing more exciting and, and it's fun and it's energetic and it's thrilling. It's, it's going in the ghettos in Memphis at 2 o'clock in the morning and, and sharing the gospel on the streets as it was when I was going and picking up dope and chasing girls. There's nothing like knowing you might, I might get shot for the gospel tonight. But you know what? That's freaking awesome. <laughs> I'm not saying you do that. I'm just saying. The life, the abundant life that he brings now, man, I've experienced it. Because I've chased the dreams. I've chased the cars. I've chased the girls. I've chased the money. I've had it. And I've lost it. And it's all dumb. It is all crap. Compared to the abundant life that Christ bought me. It's all trash. But it first had to be deeply, deeply personal. So I don't know where you're at tonight. I don't know how y'all do this. I don't think there is a way y'all do this. But I just want you to know, you stand up, you turn at your seat, you come down the front, you find a friend, you find me. I don't, I don't care. But I have a feeling that God wants to do something with somebody here tonight. So that when you step out that door, that you can bring that life to the one who needs it. So I'm going to pray for us. I'm going to turn it over to the tree over here. And then, guys, I just, man, just be obedient. Just be obedient, please. Be obedient to the truth you heard. Be obedient to what what the Holy Spirit is telling you. Because I promise you, if you can't be open and real here, you can't be open real nowhere. This is probably more open than what you get on Sunday mornings. You can come tell me all your deepest, darkest secrets can crawl up out of your city again. So, God, huh? Let's pray. Who better just want to come Father? You're holy. You are holy, you are holy. And the whole of the spirit of glory. God, there is not nothing that is made that is not made through your mouth or the hands of your son, Jesus Christ. The heavens spin at your thought. And when birth happens, at your will, death happens at your will. You are God. And we, we are not. But Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit right now is moving freely. Lord, apart from my sinful hands, as I brought your word. Lord, apart from the simple lips that we your praises, God, just you use me in spite. Lord, just forget that, Lord. You use your word. For to me, to live is Christ, but to die is gain. You do as you please. And please just do. In Jesus' name.